Dr. Fizz here with a course on general relativity. It's late November 2015, which marks the 100th anniversary, 100 years, since 1915 when Einstein first wrote down the field equations. You can find these notes at www.drfizz.com. Let's start with a quote from Larry Smart. I think Einstein's theory of relativity is one of the most beautiful creations of humankind. It is both scientific and aesthetic at the same time. It's one of the real moments in which beauty, in this case the mathematical beauty of equations, led to the science being discovered, and in its best form, science and art are indistinguishable. Well, let's begin with the art. Now, you should have calculus one and two as prerequisites for this course, that is, differential and integral calculus. I will uh, give quick reviews of various concepts, but without the calculus foundation, you'll be at a loss. Let's start with the contravariant vector, which is the idea for today's class, and I'm going to move toward that definition by the end of the little session here. First, let's look at a regular vector here from the uh, the introductory classes where you have r vector can be thought of as a sum of three vectors where i hat, j hat, and k hat are unit vectors in the x, y, and z directions respectively and x, y, and z are your magnitudes. So the magnitude of x here times i hat gets you a vector in the x direction and when you add the y and the z together you get your r vector. Now let's look at what happens when we look at a differential dr vector. Then we have a little box where each of the uh, sides, dx, dy, and dz, are infinitesimals. And we do the same thing. You have the i hat, j hat, and k hat, and you get your little differential dr vector. Now what's very important in general relativity is looking at the square of this line element and you get that by the Pythagorean theorem since these variables are all perpendicular to each other. This is an orthogonal coordinate system where i hat, j hat, and k hat are mutually perpendicular to each other. Therefore, ds squared, which I'm using for the dr squared interchangeably, you simply have dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared. Now this uh, idea of calculus where you have a slope a function dy dx, which gives you the slope, as the infinitesimal uh, here basically uh, as a limit as x goes to zero we have delta y over delta x this is a very very important concept that i like you to understand at the very fundamental level so here you have uh, dy dx which is your slope function if you hit it with dx the infinitesimal you get the infinitesimal rise dy when you have two variables they have f as a function of two variables, x and y. You can think of this as a three-dimensional problem where f is your height and x and y are your uh, flat uh, plane uh, coordinates, x and y. You take the uh, derivative of f with respect to x, keeping y constant, and hit it with dx, and that gives you your rise due to the change with respect to the x direction. And then you do the same thing with the y direction, keeping x constant. These are partial derivatives, and we write them uh, with this symbol instead of the D that you see up here. And we drop the uh, holding uh, Y and X constant. It's understood when you see this notation. Here's a nice uh, picture that helps, uh, helps us understand what's going on. If you take a step in the X direction here, then this uh, function uh, will rise up a certain amount due to the change in the x direction and then look at this it rises up some more as you go in the y direction it's a very very nice picture here uh, that helps us understand what's going on at the very fundamental level if we look here at an example of two uh, coordinate systems because i like to uh, show you something with uh, cartesian and spherical in general relativity, it's very important to think of coordinate systems and how they transform. So here we have uh, the spherical coordinates. I would assume that you've seen this before, so this uh, treatment is rather quick. A quick review where you have your r, uh, your radius, uh, then you have your theta, your angle at respect to the z-axis, and your phi. Here I like to think of this as a door where you have r 
cosine theta gives you the height of the door and r sine theta gives you the top of the door and also the bottom and then you hit the r sine theta with cosine of phi you get your x and when you hit the r sine theta with sine of phi you get your y and this gives you then the dictionary of how to transform from the x y and z language to the r uh, theta and phi think of the phi here the tangent of that angle as y over x all right so here would be your general transformation from x, y, and z to some new coordinate system, u, v, and w, which are functions of x, y, and z. And now we have the idea of the partial derivatives again as we look at a three-dimensional transformation. Let's uh, reduce this to two by just thinking of x and y, Cartesian, and polar coordinates, r and phi. Then we have a very, very simple case, the polar coordinates, and x and y, and then we have two variables to deal with instead of uh, three. So with the substitution that u uh, goes to r and v goes to uh, uh, phi, you then have very, very simple case. And I want to point out for you here some neat features. If you look at a dr, a change in the r direction, and then look at a change in the angular direction, a d phi, then r d phi gives you this element, dr gives you that element, and then once again, very important concept in general relativity, the ds or the line element the ds squared is given by then dr squared plus r squared d phi squared uh, here's a little homework problem for you to play with uh, with these partial derivatives as applied to the polar coordinates and cartesian if we go to the general case again and consider uh, x y and z as x1 x2 and x3 and u v and w as q1 q2 and q2 three then you can write this very compactly as a summation and this consists of three equations each having three terms and here I'll write one out for you down here so when I is one then you have dq1 and then here you have dq1 the partial with respect to x1 and since the j is summed over j goes from one to three you get boom 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 you get three terms there so that's a very compact way to show the transformation of one set of variables to another and Einstein noticed that when the J's are summed here they're, they appear twice I appears once on the right side so he dropped the summation sign and that's called the Einstein summation convention so when you look at this it's assumed that the J goes one two three and the I then is fixed either one two or three now you have an equation uh, that that works like this. You have components of a vector that transform in this fashion. This is the definition of a contravariant vector. So the new, the new uh, variables, the q's, so you're up here and the old ones are down there. If you want to look at components of a vector, say in a new frame of reference with the prime, a prime of i, and then you have the partials to, which relate the old ones to the new ones, then once again you have the new stuff here and the old stuff down there. And with this little visualization, uh, this is basically how your contravariant vectors work. You basically have the new up top and the old here. And that's the main idea of today's lesson, to show you the definition of the contravariant vector. So these are components of vectors. Uh, where you have, say, three components in three dimensions, where i is one, two, and three. Think of this as uh, a, uh, the x component, a when j is one, j is two is the y component, j is three is the z component, and this is then the a in the new coordinate uh, system, and it's given by this nice partial uh, derivative relationship. Contravariant vectors, and here I want you to do this homework problem. We'll revisit this uh, rotational uh, translation, ro rotational kind of thing later. Uh, this is a rotational um, situation where one, uh, say, coordinate system is the blue one, where you have x and you have then y uh, for your height, and then the red one, which is rotated, you have x prime and y prime. Uh, we'll, we'll derive this in more detail later, but the derivation is here compacting this nice little uh, form. I want you to look at that and do that as a homework problem. We'll come back to that later. Well, that's all for now. See you until next time.